stumbled upon this just today actually um recently dropped so Whitney Cummins had Olivia Munn on um who was a pretty decent guest actually all surprisingly again maybe back-to-back -back decent Hollywood guest um Joe Rogan had Rob Lowe and he was sound as fuck and Olivia Munn Olivia Munn sounds like an absolute darling like proper proper um decent woman in you know in Hollywood an actress as well right she's not all hysterical and you know trotting out those usual left-leaning kind of uh twitter hollywood elite sort of like talking points she's really um i don't know she seems kind of a kind of responsible reasonable sort of adult speaking about stuff speaking about how she navigate hollywood and it's really refreshing so this is a clip from it where she basically talks about her experience and uh in hollywood no she basically talks about kind of a looser experience in hollywood and then also mentions that kind of gives her opinion on the me too movement and what it means for men that get accused of a hedonist sexual assault you know or, or a crime of some sort and i'm imagining she's sort of alluding to the whole brian callan chris Alea situation seeing as she's speaking to um whitney cummings but i thought this clip was very interesting in that her point of view i don't necessarily agree with it but let's have a her let's hear what she has to say and i'm going to give my opinion regarding it quickly here let it load up boom 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 there we go get it up bang and someone you're dealing with like oops let's go back to the start here with like possible lawsuits with blasphemy defamation of character slander right. like it goes on and on and on the how much more danger you're putting yourself in right. however um side note that people should understand if you ever hear stories that come out in news news outlets like mm -hmm. la times new york times buzzfeed any anywhere where they're telling these where the, when an organization is telling a story mm -hmm. they are putting themselves on the line that's right so they have to vet out these stories so hardcore with their lawyers so that's if you right. ever hear a story about this possible abuser know that the story is 99.99999 percent true because this huge organization <clears throat> who could face a massive lawsuit is behind it and if you haven't heard of anybody suing for defamation mm -hmm. then know that that person is guilty yeah which is insane to say, right? I understand the sentiment. I definitely get where she's coming from. Um, I understand, just in some respects, the need to believe all women. As dumb as that sounds, I get it. You know, especially if you've if you've seen any sort of TV show, any sort of YouTube clip that kind of gives you an insight into what actually goes on when a woman has to kind of report a rape or some sort of sexual misconduct and uh, utter <clears throat> torture that they've put through in terms of reporting that crime and bringing that um, assailant to justice, it's just insane. So to, when we get to a point where the only recourse they have is reputation damage it, with some high-flying executives, it is what it is, isn't it, right? <clears throat> I, I'm not that mad at it. <clears throat> wow, bloody hell. <clears throat> I sound like DSP now, isn't it? <clears throat> the only issue I have with it is when, obviously, those things are abused and innocent men are sort of thrown under the bus or whole careers are ruined families destroyed right regardless even if it's a man or woman I, I just i'm not for that i would love to have people have their day in court be able to defend themselves and have some kind of sensible discussion when it comes to how we sort of deal with and handle situations that have to do with men and women in these really high pressure environments that by their very nature are incredibly vapid shallow and probably the worst place to try and make a career for yourself if you're young attractive and super talented right it just really isn't really made up for normal people to kind of survive there but if you do you know credit to you so i get what Olivia Munn's talking about i get the need to believe women i get the need to sort of basically give them the benefit of doubt but i also think to say that somebody is guilty because they're not suing for defamation is insane i think we need to know that you know defamation lawsuits are mad um you have to have the means you have to have the the access and definitely the time and the wherewithal to do it and the conviction it's not something anyone can do we've seen recently an episode with justin bieber where he basically um uh sued two accused on social that put out some stories about him that he felt were you know fundamentally false but justin bieber's what 27 26 he's grown up on social media completely his whole career so he had receipts and pictures and because he's one of the most famous people in the world he has images from all over the place of people taking pictures of him in different places that he can corroborate that story and basically throw <clears throat> cast aspersions or doubt on it pretty quickly 
But if you're somebody like a Brian Callen, who maybe allegedly committed your crime in the 90s, or you're a Chris D'Elia, and you're maybe, I don't know, not 90s, but you know, you probably don't have evidence of it because you don't want to keep the evidence on your phone, especially if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing because you have a wife at home, it's a bit difficult to then say you are going to be open to suing somebody for defamation, especially if you've got other secrets that you don't want people to know about. And this is something what a lot of people say, oh, but if you've got nothing to hide, it's like, no. As an adult, um, kind of functioning in the world, paying your taxes, paying your rent, keeping the lights on in your home, you're allowed to have secrets. You're allowed to have things that you kind of keep to yourself that you are sort of happy to enjoy behind closed doors with other consenting adults, without other people knowing about it but unfortunately once you open yourself up to the court system and you have a defense team trying to take you down and tear your story to part so that you have to pay for their uh, um, time in court or for their lawyer fees for sure they're going to dig up whatever they can whether it was some indiscriminate thing that you did in primary school some website you visited friends that you're associated with whatever they can get to disparage you and to cast aspersion on your name they will do though they will, they will do so so even if you're innocent it probably is in your best interest to just say hey, you know what i'm going to take this l on the chin and i'm just going to you know cut someone a check keep my head down whatever routine the hollywood crisis um, management people do and kind of move on from there so i really do think this idea that just because a guy didn't sue they're guilty is nonsense and it's also this idea that somehow these papers have such rigorous journalistic integrity that they wouldn't run a story that doesn't have a molecule of kind of doubt or falsities in it is ridiculous especially in the area of fake news especially in the area of the mainstream media or the msms is referred to we know stories get planted we know narratives are twisted and turned left right and center and we just know sometimes people just you know are blatantly put out lies or will convolute a story just so it can fit into their narrative so hey am i saying these women didn't go through their experiences am i saying that they didn't have um untoward experiences with somebody who happened to be in a more powerful position than them in hollywood no because hollywood is a disgusting place right it's full of absolute scumbags people that you would never want to invite to your house for christmas let alone date your sister so imagine what they're going to do to strangers who are you know putting their entire dreams in their hands and there's no better example than Olivia Munn herself look at this horrendous story that I found about her right when she was coming up which I didn't really even know about um this is a story about Olivia Munn supposedly she was in a movie called Predator which I didn't watch looks pretty terrible but the backstory of it is that she's in Predator and the director of Predator cast one of his mates who happens to be a sex offender, registered sex offender, right? He's actually convicted of such or found guilty in a court of law. Regardless, he's on a sex offenders list, right? He, she gets him in, she, the director of Predator gets that dude in because he's a friend, you know, does a bit of nepotism involved in Hollywood again. Um, he gets a gig that he probably shouldn't get based on his level of talent. And then he's, he's, the only scene he's sort of involved in for the most part is scenes with Olivia Munn, who obviously was a victim of, um, you know, an attempted, I think, sexual assault, which I'm, it might actually be a sexual assault with Brett Ratner. Back in the day, she was probably one of the first um, victims, I think high profile in the whole Me Too movement. So she already had her kind of, you know, turbulent experience in navigating Hollywood. Then she comes up with another thing in a scene with this guy. And then she finds out later when the movie is actually getting prepped for a press run that, yeah, this dude was a registered sex offender so she calls up the studio says that she wants the scene of him to get deleted or kind of gives him a heads up and they react in the most heinous way possible they ice her out of the promo a couple of her fellow actors basically say hey she went um she kind of jumped out the window there they kind of hoped that she would have kept the allegation to herself and put it up another time they completely iced her so imagine if they would have done that nowadays right this is just shows you how disgusting hollywood is in general not even just so most so like the men and women thing just in general so this is a story here says so jake Booth Lucy wishes Olivia Mum had waited to speak up about predator sex offender. Like, imagine how mad that statement is, right? Um, so, it continues here. It says. The Predator star Jake Boosie may have just voiced the rationale that apparently led to several Olivia Munn's co-stars to ostracize her after the actress pushed to cut one of her scenes uh, partners from the movie, from the movie, sorry, um, after learning that he was a registered sex offender. According to Boosie, the timing could have been better, meaning that Mud, Munn may have gotten more support if she had waited to speak up until after the movie's release. Do you know how nuts that is? Fair enough. The crime happened in 2010. I don't know. In my from in my lot, right? I would say the only thing that I'm never forgiving, right, right, is nonces and rapists. The only thing I'm never forgiving, especially if you're my friend and and you're convicted of a crime that falls into either of those categories, we're done. 
right? It's over. So imagine how much so for like some random dude that you happen to be co-starring with. That should be a an easy delete, right? That should be an easily an easy command backspace, right? It shouldn't be something to you know to get hot and bothered about. But they did. Um, because again, Hollywood is a disgusting place. And what were they more concerned about? The money they poured into it. I'm sure, you know, the special effects for Predator are no joke. The directors probably getting paid bucket loads. So the, so the stars of the movie, they had to recoup it. They didn't want anything to damage the possibility of recouping it. And that's what it did. And really, if you be honest, if you're going to watch Predator in the cinema, you're definitely not going to care about a sexual assault allegation, right? The kind of fan that's a fan of Predator. You don't want to care about that. You just want to watch a movie. But hey. It, the article says here, it says, um, I think it could have been done like a month from now and let the studio and the director have their night uh, of the release and the movie, Boosie told Us Weekly. And he says, and not destroy the movie over a discovery that was made a year after filming and 10 years after the incident. I think the timing could have been better. The director was in tears at the red carpet, which is not really the way you want it to be, but it's done now. It's put to bed. What an absolute cock. So that's what I'm saying. Like, look what it does to people. So I'm sure the agents, because I think Olivia Munn even mentioned in an interview with Whitney Cummings that a, an actual female Asian representative told her to basically stop complaining and grow up and stuff like that, right? And just get on with the job. People have to get paid. So imagine the the level of toxic. Imagine how toxic a work environment has to be where an, an actual fellow woman, someone that you might have some sort of kinship with, you know, the, knowing the industry that you're in and the amount of sleazeballs that are in there, is telling you to get over the fact that one of your co-stars may be a sexual offender, especially considering your history and your experiences that you've had yourself if you're living a man. It's just a, it's just a disgusting place. It just needs to be, which it probably means, in my opinion, which probably serves, it probably serves Hollywood right that COVID is happening. If, if, any, if, any, if anywhere needs a cleanse, uh, a rinse through, a uh, root and stem um, sort of um, kind of job done to it. It's definitely Hollywood. It says here, the discovering question came from Mun, found out from her acquaintance that Stephen Wilder's Strigler, um, with whom she shared one scene in Predator, put of a Nazi name as well, and it says, he saw scene in the film, which has now been cut, has been a registered sex offender since 2010, when he pleaded guilty to trying to lure a 14-year-old girl into a sex relationship. God almighty. What is it with actors or people in Hollywood and going out, going out, trying to get underage girls? Like, what is the deal with that? Do you think it's a kind of like um, pursuit of youth? right this kind of infantilization in industry where where you meet like a 40 year old in hollywood isn't like a normal 40 year old right they're sort of like suspended in their kind of maturity process maybe that's part of it right because no no normal woman would want to date an actor right that would probably be the worst thing ever right especially a really a one a self-absorbed narcissistic actor because he's not going to be the best dad in the world is he for the most part he's not even going to let alone a husband um God almighty. For your relationship. Um, when mum informed her co-stars, she says Studio 21st Century Fox chastised her. Her co-stars, meanwhile, were slow to publicly show their support for her, even giving director Shane Black a standing ovation at the film, at the TIFF, yeah, which occurred and news broke out about the thing. Jesus, fans are horrible. But yeah, the co-stars is a big one. It says, I look back and I see the guy standing up and I just was confused because I hadn't <laughs> heard from them during the day, Man told uh, Vanity Fair's Krista Smith. She says, everybody else else was there was sitting down look what's happening here oh i'm just pause this video it's playing here what she says here everybody else was sitting down it wasn't like this massive standing ovation for him it felt like it was still appropriate to clap and cheer but to actually make the gesture to stand up especially in this moment and probably i knew that no one reached out to me to say are you okay it didn't feel bad um a representative from mum's co-star keegan kelly it, <laughs> VF, that he had reached out to her privately via message of support while his other co-star sterling k brown tweeted the support of mun the day after the vf interview her co-star boyd holbeck also revealed a statement apologizing for his late response as this type of social commentary is new to me and given the nature of the organ originating crime i felt further discussion would cause unwanted drama and pain and i realized that my understanding of the situation was not for just a picture of it last thing i want is for olivia to ever be feel abandoned alone just imagine if you're olivia mando you can never trust any of these guys again right for sure especially with your especially in hollywood because they definitely have proven that they'd rather you know have a successful movie release than back you up in, in the pretty meat and potato issue right getting somebody that's a registered sex offender off the movie or deleting a scene that isn't inconsequential to the actual movie itself again i haven't watched it i don't know if it's inconsequential, but i'd assume so it shouldn't be that hard but that just shows you the level of kind of toxicity that is kind of 
you know, all over Hollywood. So to sit there like a living man and say, oh, just because someone doesn't countersue or doesn't sue for defamation, that they're going to be guilty of the crime is nuts. Especially if you've gone through what you've gone through there with pretty decent dudes that have, do, that have kind of thrown under the bus. Imagine what um, is happening to decent guys, right? Getting accused of these kind of things. So yeah, I, I get where she's coming from. I understand, I understand the issues at hand, but let's be sensible. You know what I mean? Everyone deserves a day in court. Even the most heinous of criminals, everyone deserves it. And again, if they're guilty, you know, lock them up and throw away the key. That's what I say. Nonsense get no love in my world.